Um, yeah, so I sent uh, an email of some of the activity of over the past couple of weeks, and as I mentioned before, new to the community, a month and a half in, and um, got plenty of warning from others not to work with Crazy Steve and Linda and others, or the board's not transparent, all these kind of things, and um, I, I usually take all of that with a grain of salt and like to ask a lot of questions. Like, for example, in my career, um, for my I'm a finance lead for a half a billion dollar budget and expenses, so my job is ac actually asking questions about things that I may not be totally experienced in, and where there's certain lack of transparency or things where there's gaps in understanding, I press, and if I don't see openings, that's where I start to ask more questions. And I think I've learned a lot from you know, what's the collateral online, opinions from Steve, Linda, John, neighbors, and, and that. And I think you know, from gathering more feedback from people in the community, it, it was, I, I learned very quickly, um, once certain members of the community, primarily people who walk the path in getting their feedback, it was near unanimous of the feedback of objection to the proposal. And I'm not being um, um, hyperbolic about this. And it was only, you know, yes, it's in my backyard. Now I can see a building. Yes, property value potentially at risk. But I'm not in any way the NIMBY. I don't want anything in my backyard. That has never been my perspective. I think it was only once we started getting feedback from people on the path, it was like, wait a second. like. I, I know Steve has this online change.org um, petition, and it was only after learning and talking to the people that I was like, actually, there's, there's some teeth here, and I think it's worth at least having a conversation and at least making sure that you guys, and I know there's people who are supportive, and I know in any initiative there's going to be pros and cons or people on both sides of the aisle, and I just wanted to make sure I brought it to your guys' attention that the people who appear to be educated on the matter seem to be um, from what I've from the people that I've talked to and yes the message is coming from me and if it was coming from Bill maybe that one may be different um, but I just wanted to flag that to you guys and and yes I think it's it's incumbent upon the people in the community to be educated to ask questions to come to meetings and as I've seen over the past two and a half months maybe the community doesn't do as good of a job and Maybe we as the community doesn't do a good job advertising as much of, of what's going on. Um, but I think it's valuable in terms of, you know, as I approach my job and I look at how are decisions made, what are the pros and cons, what are the options, what are the need to haves, what are the nice to haves, and, you know, taking a step back of how I evaluate things in my job, I immediately see red flags in terms of I can't figure out how. Bill was selected. Like I'm not, in, in no knock to him, and I'm not an architect, but I see online four designs. But then I know he was selected as a fifth art architect. So just from the start of just the face of things, and then going down that design of the environmental review of when we ask questions about the design, it was hold that thought. You can't talk about that because this is environmental specific. And then we kept that design. Yes, there has been modifications over the past couple months, and it sounds like Bill's done a great job working with the staff making changes, but what it still appear to be at the margins, not fundamentally different um, design proposals. And, and with that, I just wanted to, to make sure you are aware with the community feedback and, and everything that we've se I've seen and heard and, and, uh, and, and factor that into your overall decision of, about the process and how you incorporate community feedback, because that's one of the things I asked even my very first meeting is like, my first question was, how do you make decisions and how do you incorporate feedback? And I think the second point, um, which I noted in the email to you is, you know, the size I think goes hand in hand with the alternatives. I think it's hard to look at something with, it's an all or nothing, this is your option, take it or leave it. Um, the second was the budget. Uh, uh, I appreciate that there's things that we can't know, but many of us own homes, we all make decisions about budgets, but you have to make some assumptions. You have to have some working idea of, is it a million dollars that we're gonna put? Is it two, is it a half a million? Um, and those things should, I think, as, as responsible neighbors, we should all be asking. And I don't think that's a partisan one way or the other. Um, uh, even people who are for, the, on, for the, the design proposal on next door, we're also asking the same questions. Like, I'm supportive of the design, but we need to be kept in the loop. And then and the third is just open questions, and, and I think Bill or Eric touched on it today, is you know, 
I think it's it's been great in terms of Bill walking through the design in detail. But anytime what I felt where there was open questions, they kind of were said okay and we moved on. Um, one area being uh, where our car is going to be allowed. Is, is in front of that building going to be 100% restored with no cars whatsoever? Um, what all are all the seven vehicles? Do we have the commitment from the board and the maintenance staff that they will, no matter what, always be parked in the building? Um, uh, the rest, the, in terms of the restoration, how does that budget fit in um, as part of the whole project? Because I don't think it's worth piecemealing this um, because I think, as we all know when we were talking about earlier, the, the, the risk of going down a path without being cognizant of um, budget and risk. And I think, and then the, the drive-through of being able to exit the vehicle on that side, no one has yet addressed whether the cars will be using that path to turn around or in any capacity. So I think yeah. those things at, at a high level in terms of the second theme of this, of you know alternatives, budget, and, and some of these open questions um, for me is, is why I, I object to the current design proposal and, and I believe that you know why we have another 200 people in the community um, that are sympathetic to those views and and in no way do I, I say that I speak for the community in any way all I know is is the opinions that have been shared with me from from community members um, and I just want to make sure that you're aware of that and your decision going forward thank you Thank you. Uh, before we <coughs> any other comments, Bill, could you address the issue of potential vehicular movement um, in and around the building? Sure. Uh, I, I had thought we had uh, mentioned it a bunch of times, so I'm happy to um, indicate the efforts again. Um, the, the goal from the start is to be able to, at night, put all the vehicles inside locked away. Uh, I don't see why that can't happen with the current square footage. It would be fantastic to double the size of the courts, double the size of the building, blah, blah, blah. But you know, given the fact that um, we've already pressed the, the staff to try to accept uh, you know, a level of square footage that's, um, that's less than what they originally wanted or hoping for, um, I, I think this is the compromise that does allow you to get all the equipment in behind the, uh, behind the fence and, or in the building one way or another. Um, there is no other parking outside or any parking lot. Um, I was surprised to even hear yeah. thoughts about that. Uh, and in terms of, so in terms of the day-to-day -day operations, uh, you have the crew coming in fairly early and, and uh, obviously would be getting the uh, equipment out uh, into the field as they were on you know, any typical day for whatever the needs are that day. So probably out of the of the courtyard uh, on probably the, the west side. Um, and so the you know if for in terms of traffic uh, operations kind of traffic, I would see that you know mostly happening at at this end. And uh, of course there are times when they will either to access down on this end of the park or through the panhandle be moving vehicles along this side. I pointed out the 15th three clear here. There's plenty of other room here, just as there is currently uh, in, you know, in this area to be able to move vehicles through. Now, the, the, the sort of aesthetically the nicest way to do that or the best way to treat the ground is something that, again, the landscape architect would, would you know, best uh, suggest. And fortunately, you know, the district has the ability to implement whatever, implement whatever kind of landscape plan they want because that's what we do, that's what the staff does. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility and efficiency in terms of like how that actually is addressed. So, uh, in terms of getting into this area and out of this area, we stood there the other day. Uh, it may be hard for, for someone who doesn't visualize 3D space as well to, to picture how you can do that given, you know, this building that's there. Once that building's gone, it's really, easy to, to kind of pull out and turn around. It won't be necessary to drive a quarter of a mile down and turn around. So either getting in here or getting out of here, um, I, I don't see any problem with that. Uh, we're working with site constraints that are, that are realistic in trying to, to figure out the best way to do that, but I think that this is serviceable and usable you know, on, in an operations uh, basis. All right. I want to comment there too, and Eric, I appreciate all your comments. Thank you. Um, 
I think it's important to note that, uh, you know, as far as fundamentally different, this, the life of this development and evolution of this is going.